Hey everyone, this video is going to be the first in a small series of videos on how to purify over-the-counter reagents, uh, things that you can buy at hardware stores or drug stores or wherever you happen to get your chemicals. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you is simple distillation, and that's a way to purify liquids that you get. And to do that, I'm going to be distilling acetone. Acetone, you can buy at hardware stores as a paint thinner. So the idea behind a simple distillation is to just heat your liquid up to its boiling point and then recondense it in another flask. And in this way, if you have a mixture of liquids, like in this case, it's going to be acetone and water, uh, along with probably some other organic contaminants. Um, if their boiling points are sufficiently different enough, you can just use this method to separate the two, because the lower boiling point component will uh, turn into a vapor first, and then condense, and you'll collect a purified product at the end. So let's go over the individual pieces of my setup here. So the first component of this is a hot water bath, which is heated by a hot plate. We have to use a hot plate in this case rather than a, a butane burner or something because we're distilling a flammable solvent. Acetone is quite flammable, so you definitely don't want it to be near any open flames. Um, so the water bath is in this evaporating dish here, and inside of it is the reaction flask, uh, which is where my acetone is. You can see that the water levels are a little bit different. You know, water on the outside, acetone on the inside. Um, and also in the reaction flask I have some boiling chips. They're porous carbon pieces, and those assist in uh, boiling. It provides nucleation sites for, for uh, bubbles to form on so that this thing doesn't superheat, and then when you tap it or something, it can uh, like violently boil and spew a bunch of liquid up out of the top of this thing. So it's always a good idea to have boiling chips. So anyways, this is attached via a Keck clip to the still head here, uh, which at the top of it has a thermometer adapter and a alcohol thermometer in it. This way we'll be able to keep track of the temperature. So acetone uh, just is, turns into a vapor at about 56 degrees Celsius. So once this reaches 56, we'll know that acetone's coming over. Uh, the positioning of this is also kind of important. Uh, you can see the bulb is actually a little bit higher than what it should be. It should be in line with the bottom here, about here. Um, but I had already wrapped all the Teflon tape and everything. I didn't want to redo it. And this distillation is not really a big deal, so it doesn't really matter if some water comes over. Um, okay, so that still head is then connected via another Keck clip to my condenser, which is a water-jacketed uh, Liebig condenser. You can see there's an inner tube there, which is where the gases are, and the condensing uh, acetone will flow down, and then there's an outer tube around it, which is where water flows into. And the water comes in through these hoses and goes over to a bucket full of water. So I'm going to be pumping water down in, down to the bottom portion first, which will then fill up and drain out the top. Uh, and so this provides a long, cool environment for the gases to condense. And then that is connected via yet another cat clip to my other water bath and the collection flask. This collection flask is sitting in a water bath that I'm going to put ice in when this is ready to go to cool it down. So this will ensure that any acetone that condenses stays as a liquid once it reaches the end. So, let's get started. So now there's cool water flowing around the condenser and it'll be much, much more efficient. You see that I, I hooked up the inlet to the bottom and the outlet to the top uh, of this setup. That's usually the, the recommended way to do it because it's easier on the pump. It's been 15 minutes or so of heating, and you can see the boiling chips are doing their work, and we're getting a nice smooth boil. So you can see there's a couple of drops coming out of the end of the condenser and collecting into the receiver. So we're collecting our product. And uh, like I thought would happen, the thermometer is not quite deep enough uh, in the stream so the temperature hasn't really risen too much so while it is indeed boiling uh, that means it's got to be about 56 down in the, in the uh, reaction vessel but uh, up here where the thermometer bulb actually is the vapors haven't quite gotten that hot enough you can see they're condensing around it actually so that's going to cool it down a little bit so that's the general idea as I said you're going to boil your uh, reagent down here. It's going to turn into a vapor, come up through here, dis or, uh, condense in the condenser, and be collected in the collection flask over there. 
and that's going to leave behind extra water uh, and organic contaminants or whatever else was in this hardware store grade stuff. I'm sure it's not very pure. Uh, so you might be thinking that this whole setup is pretty complicated, and it is. I'm not going to argue. Uh, I just mainly wanted to use my fancy new ground glass distillation kit, uh, and I figured I'd try it out with something simple like acetone. If you didn't have anything like this, you could very easily distill acetone straight out of the can. I've heard of people do that. You just replace the cap with one that has a big long uh, copper pipe coming out of it and you just directly heat the acetone can and that's really good enough. You don't have to pay attention to the temperature and use a water jacketed condenser or anything fancy like that. Uh, I, like I said, I just figured I had this stuff so I wanted to try it out. Okay, it's been about an hour and my distillation is complete. So here's my finished product. This is purified acetone. So this should have gotten rid of quite a bit of the water uh, and any solid organic components that may have been in there, or higher boiling organic components. Um, there's going to be some water still in there because acetone forms an azeotrope with water, and I think it's something along the lines of uh, 97 or 98 percent acetone and a couple of percent of water. Uh, that's going to be pretty difficult to get rid of, but I'm not really concerned with that because purity of this is honestly not too big of an issue. Um, I'm just going to use it for cleaning glassware, really. Nothing fancy. Um, so here's what's left in the, uh, the original flask. Still a little bit of liquid left and of course the boiling chips. I probably should have left a bit more liquid in there just to make sure that none of the water or anything higher boiling came over as well. Um, but I just kind of I let it go slightly too long. Um, I would have been able to keep better track of that had my thermometer been at the proper position. Uh, I never really got a good reading off of it during the whole thing. Um, but anyways, there it is. That's how you purify over-the-counter liquid solvents through simple distillation.